Hello, and welcome to the Archives. Uh, we're going to be taking a look at the newest uh, data pack cycle in the wonderful game of Android Netrunner. Um, that particular one is called, I believe, uh, Solset Island. Or maybe Solset Isle. Hmm. Let me double check. Just to be, just to be on the safe side so that I know exactly which one. Yes, Solset Island. <clears throat> I actually didn't know that it had come out, so uh, when I was at my local game store the other day to play some Netrunner, I ended up running into it and uh, had to snag it. So we're going to take a look right now, and we're going to jump right into the runner cards and have a little peek. All right, here we have the first card, uh, Making an Entrance. It is a event priority. Uh, play only as your first click. You can look at the top six cards of your stack. You may trash any of those cards and arrange the rest in any order. Interesting. Zero credits to play. Two influence cost and art card. Uh, sometimes in an instant you realize who your friends really are. And we've got Jasminder Serene in a very lovely looking dark purple punkish pink ball gown um, with her beautiful two-tone hair. That's kind of interesting. I rather like it. <clears throat> even if it is um, even if it is a possibly trashing cards, it, it says you may trash any of those cards and arrange the rest in any order. So you can, this just lets you play it, look at the top six cards and rearrange all six if you want. Which is not bad. Not bad at all. And trashing some, that can be very useful for the Anarchs, especially if you've got stuff that plays stuff from your heap for a free. Uh, you, can, you can do that. I kind of like this one. I really do. All right, we'll move on to the next card and have a little peek. Here we have the Salset Slums. It's a resource location, CD, two credits to install, two influence costs. Once per turn, when you pay the trash cost of an accessed card, remove that card from the game instead of trashing it. Underestimate these people at your own peril. Akshara Serene. Very interesting. I, I, I do like it. You can literally just remove it from the game instead of trashing it. Hmm. Once per turn, once you get it down, <clears throat> which lets you, oh, yes, with that in play, I I want to put that in my Reign of Roja deck, so while I'm getting in and trashing things from the corp, their, uh, their assets, <laughs> or an access card, um, it's literally taking it completely out of the corpse hands. They can't touch it anymore. It's removed from the game. Oh, I like it. I like it a lot. All right. Now let's move on to the next. Here we have a criminal card. Uh, exclusive party. Zero credit event to play. Uh, one influence cost. Draw one card. Gain one credit for each copy of exclusive party in your heap. Limit six per deck. Hmm. So the more parties you throw out, the more exclusive parties you've used, the more credits you gain, plus you're getting a card. So you're spending a click, getting a card and a credit. The next time you do it, you're spending a click to get a card and two credits. Or no. No, no. Gain one credit for each copy of Exclusive Party in your heap. So the first time you use it, you only get a card. Then the second time you use it, you get a card and a credit. Then the third time you use it, you get a card and two credits, a card and three, a card and four, and a card and five. All right. That could be useful. I could see that um, just as a way to gain cards and credits. Definitely. And this has got Jasminder. I believe that's her. Um hacking in with a uh, little database thingy, maybe. Um, I think she's wearing the same dress. 
No, she's not wearing the same dress. It's um, I think that's more of an um, an Indian style uh, dress uh, that she's wearing there. It's hard to see behind the watermark and uh, the uh, holographic interface that she's got up. This is our limit six per deck card. The flavor text is the more parties that she attended, the more they trusted her, the more they trusted her, the more entertaining her scams became. Okay. Hence why the more you use it, the more money you're getting back each time. All right. Uh, yep. 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 And if you've got ones that let you pull events and replay them from your heap, once you've played them all, you can just keep replaying it and getting that card and five credits. Yeah, I, that that is a uh, that is something I would definitely throw in a deck. And only one influence, so you can put all six of it in any deck for only six influence. Not bad. Not bad at all. All right. On to the next here. Here we have a criminal icebreaker. Uh, Vamadeva. I believe it's Vamadeva. Six credit to install. One, one memory unit cost. Two strength. Two influence. Uh -huh. It is a program. Icebreaker AI Deva. One credit to break ice subroutine on a piece of on a piece of ice with exactly one subroutine. One credit plus one strength. Two credits swap Vamadeva with a Deva program from your grip, the Preserver. Okay. Yeah. Now, if I remember correctly from the other one, there was a Deva program that cost like I think zero or two credits to install this one costs six so you get that in your hand you don't install it you just install the cheaper one then you can pay two credits to swap that one with Vamadeva yeah I'm liking this this mechanic where you can have a, a grip with da with Deva programs in it and just continually swap it out just for credits and use it as you need to yeah, that is that is very nice. That is very nice. I, I, I like it. I'm going to have to make a Jisminder Serene deck, I think, and play around with this. Or maybe just use some Deva programs and make a Deva program deck. Oh, that could be fun. That could be fun. All right, on to the next. Here we have a Shaper program, Brahman. Uh, four credits to install, two memory unit cost. Two memory unit. That's a bit of a hefty cost for that. Uh, Icebreaker AI. Not a Deva, though. One credit to break up to two ice subroutines. Two credits for plus one strength. It is a three strength icebreaker with an influence cost of three. Whenever an encounter with a piece of ice in which you used Brahmin to break a subroutine ends, add one installed non virus program. To the top of your stack. Oh, I don't know. I don't know if I would use this one or not. Because, I mean, it's it's got a decent strength. You can break multiple ice subroutines. It doesn't say you can use it on anything. But you have to... You basically uninstall... Um... An installed non-virus program to the top of your stack, so you, you'd be uninstalling programs once you've used it. And it's not trashing it; it's just putting it to the top of your your deck. I I don't know if I would use it. I'm not sure. I'm sure there's some sort of mechanical uh, thing going on where you, that would become um, you would want to do that, but I don't know what it would be. I'm not that good uh, at Netrunner. Okay, hmm. let's check the next one. What do we got here? Patron. Three credit resource connection. Uh, three influence costs. When your turn begins, you may choose a server. The first time you make a successful run on that server this turn, instead of accessing cards, draw two cards. Anyone who can afford dwarf elephants can afford to be my friend. Fake ear. Mm -hmm. And you see this lady here with three little dwarf elephants. Uh, hence the 
the wonderful flavor text there. Uh, hmm. This is kind of like security testing, but instead of getting two credits when you do it, you draw two cards. That could be handy. That could be handy, especially if you want to draw cards. You just make a run, as long as it's successful on the one you choose. You just uh, draw two cards. So you, you still make a successful run, which can be useful if you have to be running a lot um, to prevent things like, oh, I don't know, subliminal messaging. Um, and then you get two cards drawn. Not bad. Not bad. I might use this. All right. On to the next. Here we have Sports Hopper, a three-credit hardware vehicle. Gives plus one link strength. And you can trash it to draw three cards. Check out my new ride, 2X Tiger. No influence cost on this, so this is pretty neutral. Anyone can use it. I like it. it it's a hardware vehicle that gives you a link strength, which is good. You can trash it at any point to draw three cards, which can be good. So it's kind of like diesel in a way, except you don't have to, you don't have to actually, you're not playing it and wasting the click to get the three cards, because trashing is a paid ability. Yeah, yeah, I could see myself using that, throwing it in a, in a few deck, because it could it could be helpful, uh, especially if I'm not depending on the link strength being there. All right, bizarre. Resource location, Ritzy. One credit to uh, install this resource. Whenever you install a piece of hardware from your grip, you may install another copy of that hardware from your grip, paying all costs. In these days of digital full sim browsing and widely available nano assembly, it takes a special kind of crazy person to go shopping in meat space. There are millions of them. <laughs> zero influence cost this is kind of this is kind of like rabbit hole in a way but once it's up and active as a resource um, for only one credit it works on any piece of hardware you install so you can like batch install hardwares with this which is which is nice I, I like that I like that a lot yeah, I'm I'm gonna have to uh, dig that out of out of the deck that uh, or the uh, the data pack I have and throw that in a couple of my decks maybe. Mm hmm. Yes. All right. Now we're gonna move on to the corporate cards. And here we have uh, personality profiles, a Haas Bioroid agenda with very creepy cover art. You've got the the Bioroid. Um, looking all stern and evil and in shadow. And then you see the, the tiny little glowing dots of the eyes. There's a line going out to either side to two, uh, basically the, the, the sadness and the happiness, uh, like the Greek masks of, uh, what is it, uh, comedy and tragedy is what it is. Um, from the theater, you've got the comedy and tragedy uh, bioroid heads that look creepy. So yeah, I kind of like it. A three, um, three cost agenda, three uh, credits, uh, advancement tokens to advance this. One agenda point, it is worth. Whenever the runner searches his or her stack, or installs a card from his or her heap, he or she must trash a card from his or her grip at random. Mm hmm. That would be something that would. Um, cause trouble for a runner yeah this one i think is going into one of my hospital ride decks i think so mm -hmm. on to the next here we have the jeeves model bioroids two credit res cost asset alliance uh, this card costs zero influence if you have six or more non-alliance hp cards in your deck the first time you spend three clicks on the same action each turn, gain a click. Uh, flavor text being very good, sir. Three influence cost, five 
to trash for the runner. This is a handy asset to have. I like it. I even like it more because without any other cards, if you have this active, you can install, well, no, you can't install, um, but you can, if you have it already installed, you can uh, advance and score four cost agendas with this because you would go advance, 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 and you've done the same uh, action three times in a row. You'd gain a click, and then you could advance it again to four and score it. And if you have biotic labor, playing that uh, would give you four clicks a turn instead of just three. Then you could install advance and score a four point. Or if you wanted to play multiple biotic labors, you could do five and six point agendas as well in a single turn. So, hmm, I really like the Jeeves model Bioroid and the, the thematic element behind uh, having the Bioroids gives you more clicks, lets you do more things because you've got all this extra labor. It's, it's kind of neat. And he definitely doesn't look human, does he? Not at all. But then he was, he's not supposed to. All right, on to the next. We get some Jinteki cards going. Raman Rai, or Raman Raj, perhaps. Uh, I think it's Rai, though. Uh, one res cost, one credit res cost. Uh, Asset Alliance Executive. You see the, uh, the Indian man here with the suit and the turban walking along a garden path. This card costs zero influence if you have six or more non-alliance Jinteki cards in your deck. Three influence normally. Three trash cost. Once per turn, you may lose a click when you draw a card. When you, If you do, reveal that card and a card in archives of the same type, then swap those cards. So if I'm reading this correctly, once per turn, you can lose a click when you draw a card. So you're like, I spend a click, I draw a card. But I'm losing a click, so it's actually two clicks to draw a card, reveal it, and swap the two cards of the same type. One in archives and one in your grip now. So it's a way to pull stuff out of archives, only costing two clicks and trashing a card. Hmm. Not exactly like Jackson Howard, uh, similar in a way. Um, hmm. I don't know if I like this one or not. I don't know. I'm not the best user of Jackson Howard. He's only in like one of my decks. Huh. All right. On to the next card. Oh, here we have. I'm going to try and pronounce this right. Uh, it's either. Upa Yoga or Upa Yoga? Or maybe Upa Yoga, I don't know. Uh, we'll, we'll just say Upa Yoga. It is Ice Code Gate Psy. Three credit res cost, four strength. You and the runner secretly spend zero, one, or two credits. Reveal spent credits. If you and the runner spent a different number of credits, the runner loses two credits. That's one subroutine on it. The other subroutine is resolve a subroutine on a piece of resed Psy Ice. So this one is handy when you have other Psy Ice kicking around. Connect two truths, connect two programs, all is one. And you have a palm that looks to be made up of other things, hence the, the connect two truths and programs thing. And it is a one influence uh, card. So this is something you can have in other decks quite easily. Not bad. Not bad at all. I might throw that in my Jinteki deck. All right, let's move on to the next card. 
here we have, um, <laughs> well, uh, definitely going to try and pronounce this, an NBN card. Our, I think it's Aryabata or Aryabata, Aryabata Tech, we'll say. Asset Ritzy. Whenever there is a successful, a successful trace, trace, gain one credit and the runner loses a credit. Yep, that's going into my NBN deck. Doesn't matter where. <laughs> Have an asset in a server, Ritzy, boom. Whenever there's a successful trace, gain a credit and the runner loses a credit. Because I got a lot of tracer ice in my NBN deck. So this just starts giving me money and making the runner lose money whenever there's a successful trace. As the world shrinks, communications becomes the most essential technology. Ramesh Gupta, one world economy. Two credit res, three credit to trash for the runner, two influence costs. Yep, I didn't even look at the trash cost or anything or the influence. I'm just like, no, no, it's, it's going in my deck because it's good. I like it. I like it a lot. Okay, on to the next card. Here we have Salem's Hospitality. Two credit res, or two credits to play, Operation Alliance Grey Ops. Four influence cost on this beast. Uh, this card costs zero influence if you have six or more non-alliance NBN cards in your deck. Name a card, the runner reveals his or her grip, trashes all copies of the named card from his or her grip. Okay. So this is one, if you've got an idea, uh, for example, if you happen to know that the runner has a lot of programs or has a specific uh, card in their grip, you can go, uh, I'm going to play this, uh, trash all copies of this card that you have in your hand. Boom. So that can be, uh, that can be definitely be handy. I do like it. I do like it a lot. Okay, on to the next card. Here we have a Wayland Consortium card. Executive Search Firm. You have uh, zero credit res, Asset Alliance Ritzy. This card costs zero influence if you have six or more non-aligned Wayland cards in your deck. Once it's active, spend a click, search R&D for an executive, sysops, or character. Reveal it, add it to HQ, shuffle R&D. Three credits to trash, three influence cost, and you have the lovely Bioroid uh, lady here offering a drink and a cigar to the to the executive. It doesn't really look like a Bioroid, but if you look very carefully around the shoulder area, you can see the seams and whatnot. The coloring also kind of makes that apparent. Okay, yeah, yeah. See, I'm never, I'm, I never like revealing anything to the runner, so I don't know if I would use it, but I can see the appeal, especially if you're trying to psych the runner out, um, basically being like, I'm going to search R&D for, uh, for example, Ryan Knight, who just gives you brain damage if you run on the last click. See, that can, that can psych the runner out. Okay, all right, no, I, I kind of see why it, the, the appeal of this now, yeah. Very cool, very cool. Okay, on to the next. Here we have the Indian Union Stock Exchange. One credit to res asset, uh, three credits to trash, two influence cost. Whenever you res or play an out of faction card, including Indian Union Stock Exchange, gain a credit. Okay. So, if you if you are not playing Wayland and you have this card in your deck, even when you res it, it says whenever you res or play an out of faction card, including Indian Union Stock Exchange, gain a credit. So the way I'm reading it is you can res this and gain a credit. So you res it for free, basically. I, I can see how this would be handy. 
especially if you're playing a lot of out of faction cards. All right, all right. Wealth wisely invested is wealth earned. The new gospel of wealth. Okay. Yeah, I can see that. I might use it anyways, but I can see that. All right, on to the next. Ooh, we have some uh, some ice here. Some wonderful uh, uh, neutral ice, in fact. Cobra. Four credit res. It is an ice sentry destroyer AP. One strength. No influence on this one. A very wonderful menacing picture, too. I quite like that. Um, trash one program. Do two net damage. The Naja Naja is the king of all serpents. Okay. I can get behind that. Hasn't got a very high strength, but that's a decent uh, a decent ice. Especially if they can't get by it and run into it. That trashes program and does net damage. Yeah, not bad. Not bad at all. Okay, on to the next. We've got almost done. Just a couple more. Here we have a localized product line. Four credit operation to play. Hmm. Uh -huh. So you see this wonderful product line here with these laser printers printing uh, Mumbad beans, I think, on it. Printing over the another um, coffee label, I guess. <laughs> uh, search R&D for any number of copies of a card. Reveal them and add them to HQ. Shuffle R&D. That's why it costs so much. Because you get that in, you spend four credits, and you're like, I'm going to search for every copy of this six-card thing that I want. Although I don't know if the corp has any six cards. I can't remember. I think it's just the runners for now. Maybe, maybe. But you can, you can search for all three of a certain card. And add them to HQ and have all three of them in hand. But you have to reveal them too. Hmm. It's the exact same coffee, but the price sure is different. Because it's the brand name. It's all about the brand name. Uh, three influence cost on this. Even though it is a neutral. Hmm. So that's a bit... That's got a bit of a price to it. Four credits to play it and three influence? That's to keep it from being abused. All right, and here we are on the last card. We have the Mumbad Virtual Tour. Zero credit res, upgrade alliance. This card costs zero influence if you have seven or more assets in your deck. If the runner accesses Mumbad Virtual Tour while it is installed, he or she must trash it if able. Five credits to trash. Two influence cost. So if you've got a lot of assets, uh, this is something else to stick into it because it's a nice little trap. Um, you just install it, leave it uninstalled, like actually leave it not resed so that the runner accesses it. When they access it, oh no, because it's installed, you must trash it. Sucking five credits out of their economy. Yeah. I like it. I like it a lot. I would definitely use this. But I'd have to make sure I have seven or more assets in my deck. Hmm. I wonder. No, it, it's an upgrade. It's not an asset. So it has to be an asset. All right. So yeah, you have to make sure uh, you have seven assets in your deck before you stick this in. But that can be easy enough we done. So... Uh, that's it for the Salset Island uh, data pack. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed uh, listening to me uh, ramble on about these wonderful cards and Netrunner. Uh, as always, if you like what I'm doing, please give that like button a tap. Uh, give that subscribe button a tap as well, if you haven't already, so you can be kept apprised of when I do new videos. I usually try and put out a couple of videos every week. 
uh, if I can. Uh, sometimes more, sometimes more. Uh, and throw a comment in the comment section. Uh, if you are playing Netrunner, if you're interested in the alliances and the new mechanics they seem to be throwing up in the Mumbad cycle, um, if you like Salset Island at all, and or any of the data packs in this new cycle, uh, let's get a, get a discussion going on uh, Netrunner, because I would love to talk to some people. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's about it. Uh, I'm going to let you all go for now. But until next time, my friends, keep running.